Shows in Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube and then all over the internet. We will be streaming live and we welcome everybody to the stream. We're going to start off the stream today with, <laughs> don't get our hopes up, but this actually might work. I got to turn down the volume here a little bit. And so we are streaming live. get a lot better at some point than we are right now so today we're going to talk about episode one of Fukushima and Fukushima I know it's hard to hear me when you're down low like that Dana turn your volume up Dana and we can't hear anything you're saying Dana I'm sorry trust me I'm sorry I missed out on the very crucial part of turning my volume up for my note look like we resolved that you might have to adjust your audios I might have to adjust my audios and when I listen to this after I'll bring it down a little little touch and let's get on with the stream so we're here to talk about Fukushima hi everybody hi Adam you're <laughs> audio was low was it um, was that a minute ago? I see people chatting in the chat room and I don't know what's going on anymore. Hang on. We usually takes us a few minutes to get the live stream up and running. I smurfed up and so I was a couple of minutes late this morning because I don't know what I'm doing. And so we were rocking, says Black Blade. Yar, says Adam. That's a bit better, Adam. Can't make it out. Nice to hear you play again. Blah, blah, blah. Dana didn't have it loud enough is what I meant by that. Hi, everybody. And so let's get off with the stream. Good morning, folks. And so we are just getting back up to speed, and we're starting off all over again, talking about Fukushima uh, with these episodes. <laughs> and so why not? Anybody's not familiar with Fukushima, you really do need to pay attention to what is happening here. So we have Fukushima. Fukushima had a 9.0 earthquake. 9.0, think about that. Uh, it shook the country for six minutes. Yeah, six minutes. Imagine hitting potholes for six minutes at uh, highway speeds. Now imagine for six minutes of that. Imagine you're trying to drink coffee or whatever the case may be. But imagine that's your building, your home right now that you're in, your, your apartment building, your office building the bus you're on or wherever the case may be and that is being shaken violently for six minutes so the earth itself became destabilized it became like a blanket and it rocked through the whole country at 9,000 miles per hour it was considered a thousand times worse than Hiroshima according to the media and I agree it was felt in Florida uh, half an hour after so at 9,000 miles an hour it's extraordinarily powerful stream is all I can really tell you now, at this 50 minutes later, it released a tsunami, and this is a tsunami hitting the nuclear power plant known as Fukushima Daiichi power plant. I commonly call it the military industrial complex as directed energy weapons production facility for isotopes, because that's what you need to run these directed energy weapons, these huge lasers. Pew, pew, pew. The future of lasers, we got to kill everything else in order to create the isotopes, basically is what they're up to. And bah, we got to do it because an aliens might come and get us. So this nuclear power plant came running through the country. I'm just double checking because this is our first official live stream to make sure my audio is up high enough or too high or whatever the case may be because I can turn it down or turn it up a little a little bit here or a little bit there. Uh, but these are very sensitive. Um, your headphones and everything else are very sensitive. So if you tell me... If there's too much bass or something like that. I like the studio, best one yet. 
Yeah, and let's keep going. So the tsunami ran through that power plant itself. So let's just talk about that for a while. And think about the fact that they detonate it. And of course, when these things detonate, what you end up with was throwing the rods all over the site. And so that was the only one, but they all detonated, and we're going to show you these buildings coming up very quick. Uh, and so these buildings were all pretty close to each other, as you can see. They all detonated um, within a couple of days of each other. And now when these buildings detonate, and we're going to show you these pictures coming up, but when these buildings detonate, what happens is the the big assemblies are around 1500 pounds they got around 80 rods in each assembly and each rod is around 18 pounds and 12 feet long but it turns those assemblies into projectiles at extraordinarily extraordinary high speeds and so when they hit something they ought to go through it and smash apart and then the rods are inside that will break open and release the noble gases and we commonly refer to it as hydrogen explosions they're noble gases explosions the hydrogen is, is a huge part of it. Don't get me wrong. It went kapoey. And so the tsunami ran through this place. This is Unit 2. Um, but I put that picture there because I want you to look at these windows also. Now that was a panel that got blown there, but I want you to look at these windows where they're up fairly high. They got knocked out by that tsunami. And so I missed a whole bunch that time. And that was my fault. How did I jump all the way down there? Okay, we had a detonation, uh, we had this, then we had meltdowns. All right, we're getting there, Dana. Don't take your time or nothing, Dana. So they had vicious meltdowns. They had brutal meltdowns. And now Chernobyl in comparison, Chernobyl was one third the size. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl, because of Chernobyl, uh, you, they were only allowed to start fishing in the freshwater lakes of Switzerland two years ago. So it's been banned fishing there ever since, but it was only one third of the size of any of the reactors I'm about to show you. And Chernobyl stopped after 10 days, but these reactors didn't. Now Chernobyl, because of Chernobyl, you still can't eat the meat, drink the milk, or sell the land in parts of UK, Ireland, and Scotland because it was contaminated from Chernobyl. But once again, Chernobyl he sent in a million people. Chernobyl, 600 heli uh, helicopter pilots died of radiation uh, illnesses right away. Some of them fell right into the reactor. Now they were close, you know, flying over the reactor, dropping boric acid and lead down up on top of those reactors. And there's a good chance that what stopped the chain reaction in Chernobyl. They, they, I can't remember how much, but it was, it was a stupid amount that they dumped down and people that they sacrificed to do it. But but allegedly, as far as we know, they stopped it. The chain reaction stopped on its own, apparently. But I'm looking at the data and we've seen 600 helicopter pilots flying out there all day long, dumping boric acid and lead, people falling out of the sky. All of them died of radiation sickness. There's a good possibility that they saved humanity. Because if Chernobyl had lasted 20 days instead of 10, it would have been equal to 800 Hiroshima bombs. And if Chernobyl had lasted all the way up to today, it would have been a half a million Chernobyl bombs. But under that scale, using the Chernobyl model that's already established and vetted and verified. Hi, Kate. And Kate's got the Fukushima hounds. And so soon I'll get the links under these uh, videos. It's a lot of trouble. Just <laughs> It's a lot of trouble. And I don't stop. It's just don't stop. But anyway, here's Unit 1. Unit 1 is now confirmed, lost its inventory, 100% meltdown, a melt through, a melt out. This is many, Chernobyl is a candlestick compared to Unit 1, just Unit 1 alone. But what's surprising about this story is Unit 2. Now, Unit 2, hang on, Unit 2 coming up, think of Unit 2. Um, was the one that they alleged ran away from the power plant because of. Unit 2 outside of it was over a million sievers per hour. 
after the accident, he plowed the rods under. They plowed those rods with big uh, remote control bulldozers before they were able to get in there. There was no way to get water into those reactors or cooling pools until they brought in a plow or a big bulldozer to plow these rods out. So five sievers would kill you. What will a million do to you? Well, it'll melt all your organs in a few moments. Let's put it that way. Within 15 minutes, your organs will be liquid. Think about the Hiroshima uh, bombing victims, particularly the women, had it melted their uteruses and how they, their death throes was they, they stopped walking, squatted down, and pushed out their uteruses because it was liquefied. And then they fell over and died in agony, not just like die, die. They took another few minutes to die in absolute, unbelievable, unimaginable agony. And that's what's happening to the homeless people that they bring into Japan's these reactors. Unit 2 now is confirmed. It has all of its uh, reactor cores gone and its spent fuel pool is gone. It's gone. It's gone. This is many, 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 many thousands of Chernobyls because of the plutonium they used in there. And the uranium was reclaimed throughout all these reactors from missiles that went through the Cold War. Okay, so one and two, when you look at these buildings, like one, and you look at two, well, unit two still stood together, but it's actually all of its inventory is now admitted to be gone. Okay, so then why don't they admit that unit three's inventory is gone? You know, right? Because the Unit 3 was the one that they admitted had the mixed oxide fuel. Unit 3, the one you're looking at, I'll give you a better look at it. And I'll get rid of my uh, moniker there so you can really get a boo at it. Unit 3, this one here was considered 2 million reactors in one. This is 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And this was the one that they had completely uh, lost its inventory. But a spent fuel pool was on the roof also. There is no roof there, obviously, and we can cover that a little bit more in a bit. But this is really devastating. Compared to Chernobyl, uh, Chernobyl is a candlestick again. Chernobyl is insignificant, but look what the damage was at Chernobyl. Now, Chernobyl, Kofiana said in 2002 that over a million, three million children have permanent disabilities in Ukraine because of Chernobyl and that the New York School of Medicine published 3,500 translated peer review academic studies showing a million of cancers, of deaths. Now there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies that show up before cancer. Cancer is the last one to show up normally, unless you're... But cancer takes a long time to kill you, and so heavy doses of radiation, you can't get cancer and die right away. You died of radiation. It melted your organs, it destroyed it created these permanent lesions in your organs. Like children only need 12 becquels or 11 becquels a kilogram in their food of, of man-made ionized radiation. And we're going to look at building four here in a moment. But So what makes the radiation from the reactors different? What makes them, um, you know, um, that they have terrorist laws, that we need nuclear waste sites, that we... We spend trillions of dollars on security. What is it about that that people are easily confused about or, or are easily able to be manipulated about because they don't understand that kind of detail, that, those minutiae? And so what happens is you take an element, you put it in a chain reaction, it's getting bombarded with electrons. It could be a million electrons or neutrons, but then it accepts it as electron. Now it has a new atomic weight. Now it's not from this universe anymore. Not just this planet, but not from this universe anymore. And that that is considered man-made now. And that's why we have the terrorist laws, and that's why we worry about dirty bombs, and that's why we have nuclear holding sites, and that's why we can't get into WIP, because they had a truck fire. <laughs> I always laugh when I say that one. And it's like a walking in the sunshine but nobody can get back down there. It's like eating a banana, but nobody can get back down there without spending another $6 billion in sacrifice in people's health. No robots can survive down there, but it's okay. We need more money. We're going to go on strike. And so the extra electron that is added onto the, the atom, the atom, you can put a million atoms, two million atoms on the head of a needle, 
and you can't see it. Does that mean that it's not there? But it also doesn't mean that if you distributed out those two million atoms, that's two million cancers. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not unbelievably deadly, unimaginably deadly, unforgivably relentless. It pumps out energy every second for its entire lifespan. could be billions of years. It most likely is because it came from hot particles. Everything we're talking about, these atoms are hot particles with isotopes in it that are man-made through the bombardment. And so that's why there's an adverse reaction to everybody and everything that comes in contact with it. And that's why we have nuclear waste sites and that's why we have terrorist laws. Okay, let's keep going. But what they done was they told you it was like a banana or a potato chip or walking in sunshine or getting on an airplane or sleeping next to somebody or like the natural, normal, indigenous, stupid, everyday, permanent background radiation that's on this planet that couldn't mutate a fruit fly if it wanted to and that all the atoms, any atom from Japan's reactors will mutate the fruit fly and fetuses and everything else. It might not mutate them so they got an extra arm or a leg, but it mutates their DNA. If it's inside of them, it's destroying the DNA and the chromosomes every second. And so every time you got one in you, it's gone to work on you for the next 20 years, trying to build a sarcophagus around it. We call it a uh, tumor in order to contain it because your body floods itself with white blood cells. And the white blood cells are displacing the oxygen molecules, and that's why you feel lazy and lethargic over the last number of years. Because everybody in North America was breathing in hot particles every day, March, April, May, June, till the end of time. And so the studies on this we're going to cover in a little tiny bit coming up here. Well, let's keep going on number three. Number three detonated. I think that's number one there, is it? I put the wrong one in? Okay. That's number one detonation. And just a reminder, when number one blew up, it looked like that. So what did the number three detonation look like? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> we'll never know because they're not telling... But I do believe I got a picture or somewhere of it. So then they sprayed a water hose on number three. This was after they got back in there. This was the military and the elite groups from the military uh, went in there. And they were, they were badly injured and damaged through radiation and sickened. And they had to stand clear of each other because they were so radioactive. They became dangerous when you put two of them together. That's not a fabrication, unfortunately. And I'd say ask the homeless, but uh, nobody knows where they put those bodies. Once you go past a rod that's on the ground, you're too close to it. Before, they got a lot of the construction there, and they plowed it all under and everything else and put construction over it. Even then, it's extraordinarily dangerous. But originally, when he sent in all those homeless people, these people were dying in 40 minutes, 20 minutes. And we know there's at least 800 from shelters that have disappeared that had went to work at Fukushima. And that, why don't we, we send Harvard and Yale and Stanford and Oxford and MIT and all the, the lap dogs out there that says it's like a banana, let's send them down there. Let them go down there. We'll raise the money if they want to go. Yeah, yeah. And so, this is Unit 4. Now this one gets you, this is really bizarre. Now pay attention if you're not familiar with this narrative, is that number four is the one he told you where to remove the spent fuel rods from the pool. Yeah? Well, look at the billing. Now take a photographic memory of what you're looking at and say, just imagine before I show you the picture what the spent fuel pool is going to look like, how much carnage and damage, and what the interior roof is going to look like, how much carnage and damage. Make up your own mind before I show you the picture. Now, you got a picture in your mind what it should look like on the inside of it. Should it look like this? Because that's the official picture. And should the roof look like that? Because that is the official picture. And when you looked at those two, can you imagine that that is inside of that? I don't really need to go way down the rabbit hole with you, but they actually tore the top part of it off, but yet come out with pictures and told you it looked like that. They, they built a structure alongside of it, and told you that the fuel pool now looked like that. When in reality, it looked like it still looks like that. And that's what it looked like after the detonation for a long time. It's important to remember that all four of these reactors did melt down. And that this is not a game anymore. This is not pretend anymore. Let me turn off that noisemaker in the background. Maybe that'll... Because I know those guitars feed in everything. Hang on. 
Okay. So we are live streaming. Life is good. Hi, everyone. <coughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, Dots didn't phone me yesterday. 604 223 0763. Put $3,000 in my PayPal or credit uh, to my nuclear proctologist in my account. We'll give you a half an hour interview. We got to get this over with because I got things I got to go down and see and get done so I can. <laughs> Dutch, Dutch come out and told everybody I was going to take my boat and go all the way around Vancouver Island to Victoria at the last court appearance in a 24 foot Coast Guard Zodiac in 50 mile an hour winds when all I was going to do was go across because the ferry wasn't running and lucky for us we were able to get out of here but we were going to because if not they arrest you so I was going to take my Zodiac across to the mainland right here 30 miles away not 200 kilometers into a 50 mile an hour storm it took me 12 hours on the Furies to get there anyway. But I could have ran across it. I took it out for 260 days on this coastline. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain something about it. <coughs> so we took this Zodiac coming up here. Yeah. We took that. We took that along... We took that, I screwed that up, okay. We took that uh, 15,000 miles of coastline and we looked at the tidal zones and instead of looking like that, it looked like that. Instead of looking like this everywhere I went, it looked like that. And sometimes you find a little bit of algae, but all, all the algae and the kelps and everything else. So, let me get rid of that for you. Let me stop that before it gets stupid. See, that's not supposed to do that. That's my fault. <laughs> but anyway, we we took the boat 15,000 miles of the coastline. And what we show is that the coastline didn't recede itself. All of its species are missing, and it didn't recede itself. It's okay, Zoe. Hey, folks. Hey, buddy. Let me turn that down. We'll take a little break here, folks. Hang on one second. up on me anyway looks like the show gave up on me hang on a second no we're still streaming well I got some company that I knew was coming so we're gonna call it a day on this part of the show unfortunately and I know everybody would like for this to go on and on and on but that's not um, it's Sunday so we're gonna give it up early today and I am having problems with my stream here we just wanted to make sure that we come out and we showed all the buildings. We'll just finish off by talking about uh, number four or the tsunami. So the tsunami came through the country. Tsunami came through the country and it took out 500 miles of the coastline. And let me show you a picture of that. And so there was no way to get power back into those reactors. And so tomorrow we're going to pick up right there at this spot here. And, of course, it's, it was such a struggle for the last 20 days to get to this point and get ourselves back up and streaming again. And that um, that was the best thing that could have happened to us in one sense, is they exposed themselves by arresting me and then accused me of uh, death threats when I'm not charged with death threats. Death threats is a much more uh, uh, bigger charge, a much more serious charge. I'm charged with criminal harassment of people who said radioactive fallout couldn't make it to North America and that those people do not have a leg to stand on. So hugs for everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, for the regular shows, we'll be one hour long, 10 a.m. Pacific Canada time, British Columbia time. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. <laughs>